Right. In my life, I've had to go nuts on people. Not verbal nuts, I mean violent nuts. And both times were when my mother was in danger. First time I just fucking give the big geezer, or give the geezer a fucking bottle over the head and a fucking slap and boot down the stairs. And uh, kicked him out the door. And next time me and my mum went in the pub, which was called the Bulldog, the manager gave me a t-shirt with the British Bulldog, but it was a dog coloured in the Union Jack. <laughs> <laughs> and I was in the pub called the Bulldog. The second time, right now, that was a bit more serious. <laughs> I come home from school and I had my mate with me. I walked in the fucking door. Found this guy fucking strangling my mum on the floor. Ah, oh, fuck. I went ballistic. Right. I started kicking him in the head, fucking trying to get him off and disturb my foot. That didn't work. Oh, I picked up a fucking screwdriver, started hitting him with the handle. I didn't stab him with it. If I stabbed him with it, it would have been a bit quicker. But and then I picked up a hammer I'd made at fucking school. And I'd made it at a school I was fucking in at the time. Yeah. I didn't last much longer in that school because, yeah, my life was going down a little bit. But I know my mum was fucking annoying because she fucking annoyed me. <laughs> but, fuck. You come home and find some cunt trying to kill your mum. What would you do? Right, so I started smashing his head in with that fucking hammer I'd made at school. And that wasn't working. And I found a fucking T-square left over from my dad. And yeah, this is a four-foot fucking T-square. Draftsman bollocks. Start fucking hitting him over the head with that. Fuck, you know, and that stoked his head right in. Uh, oh, there was blood on all four walls and the ceiling. And my mum fucking threw my favourite coat under his head to catch the blood. And... I fucked off, got an ambulance, my mate ran away, and <coughs> oh, fuck, it was proper chaos. And on that occasion, the old Bill actually congratulated me for saving her life, because she was getting interviewed and he was in the hospital getting his head stitched up. Yeah, apparently he had 87 stitches in his head. <laughs> Fuck shit. Whoa. But I did go a bit skitsy. But trust me, you really don't want to fuck me off. That's why I don't take no shit. And I was only fucking 11 then. And I'm fucking heading towards 60 now, so I'm definitely not going to take no shit. Right, this is something I don't very often talk about because it's not very nice. But on that occasion, the two policewomen looked after me in the, in the police canteen and gave me some chips. And I said, whoa, this ain't good. So I had to go home, decorate the living room. Didn't get my coat back for four months. It come back mouldy. Did get my hammer back once. Don't think I've got the T-square back though. But it was covered in clara anyway, so. And I, I ain't gonna use it. I tried to go and, well, I thought about doing AutoCAD. 
Yeah. After two weeks of induction, looking at it, I was bored. So that didn't happen. Otherwise, I could have designed all my inventions, and they would have probably been good. But instead, I'll just verbalise them. Eh, it's not necessarily the right way, but who gives a fucking flying shit, to be honest. Well, I'm going to love and leave you anyway. Bye.